On his first full day in the job, the new Premier has flagged that changes are coming to the COVID roadmap. He also has a new Deputy Premier. Paul Toole has been chosen as the new Nationals leader, bringing to an end a leadership crisis that's rocked the Coalition Government. Here's State Political Reporter Ashley Raper. A public appearance after a swift exit and on her successor's first day as Premier. I just want to say thank you to everybody um, for the support they've shown me. It's very comforting. And I just want everybody to get behind the new Premier, Premier Ter Perrottet. Gladys Berejiklian surveyed the flowers, cards and signs left by her supporters. Shocked over her resignation because she's being investigated by the state's corruption watchdog. I'm I just want on everybody to know that I'm going to read every single card. Her replacement, Dominic Perrottet, is attempting to bring stability back to the government. That was helped today by the Nationals electing their own leader, Paul Toole, who will serve as the Deputy Premier. I know that together we will be working very, very closely uh, to, to benefit the lives of people right across our state. Just like the Premier, Paul Toole faced a ballot. Water Minister Melinda Pavey contested the leadership but lost 15 votes to three. The outgoing leader, John Barillaro, was in the party room meeting to see his deputy take over. I'll certainly have my own style about how I'm going to be the leader, but I'll tell you this, you know, you ask the Libs, I'm sure there's plenty of them, they'll tell you that I'm a pain in the ass. And Dom's probably about the right height that I'll elbow him, elbow him in the ribs if I have to. Upper House MP and Junior Minister Bronnie Taylor is the party's new deputy leader. She's the first woman to have the position and is now the most senior female in government. I will always speak up for women. Everything that I do, every policy that I set, every way that I look at things, I put that lens over it. Planning Minister Rob Stokes will also take on Andrew Constance's job as Transport Minister. The rest of Cabinet will remain as is. The ministers will be sworn in uh, and then they'll be straight back to work. And there's a lot of work to do. Dominic Perrottet is now in the driver's seat for managing the state's response to COVID and seems determined to do things a little differently. He's planning on changing how decisions are made and the way in which information is conveyed to the public. And he's likely to alter the roadmap. I do think there's an opportunity for some changes. But Monday remains the day the state will emerge from lockdown. There are a enormous questions that have not been answered by the New South Wales government in relation to opening up once we hit the 70% double vaccination rate. In particular, what's the protocol and procedure for business? Uncertainty still the overwhelming state of play in New South Wales. Ashley Raper, ABC News, Sydney. And Ashley Raper is with me now. So Ashley, we're sticking with Monday for the end of lockdown, but there's less certainty about how many teachers are vaccinated. Yes, Juanita, the Education Minister revealed today that the government only knows the vaccination status of 5,000 teachers when there's a workforce of 90,000. That's despite the government announcing at the end of August that vaccinations would be mandatory for teachers and the health board is enforcing that being signed two weeks ago. But the Education Minister, Sarah Mitchell, says the system for teachers to register their status was only set up on the weekend. So we're now in a situation where the first lot of students will be returning to school in less than two weeks and it's unclear whether the government will know if their teachers are vaccinated. It's been a terrible week for the government and it's uh, it's not over for them just yet. No, it isn't. The first bit is done. There is new leadership and that will in part draw a line under the past six days. But Dominic Perrottet takes over a government that's in minority, is facing three by-elections and is now leading a state, much of which has been in lockdown for 15 weeks. So there is a huge task ahead for a leader who has yet to build trust and confidence with the public. And he'll do so under the shadow of his predecessor, Gladys Berejiklian and Juanita, who will be facing public hearings at the Independent Commission Against Corruption in just under two weeks. Ashley Raper reporting. He's been described as a steady pair of hands and a departure from the more bombastic leadership style of his predecessor. New State Nationals leader Paul Toole has laid out his mission. He says one of his first goals is securing more workers for the state's best summer harvest in a decade. Paul Toole has been a loyal deputy to John Barillaro. I Paul Lawrence Toole. His colleagues have now rewarded that effort. But I'll tell you what, I'm not focusing on it because I want to make sure that we focus on the people of this state. Often called in as a negotiator, he worked behind the scenes to end the koala wars between the Liberal and National parties. 
one of Mr Tool's first challenges will be finding enough workers for the looming harvest. We're calling for a pilot program on on-farm quarantine to deal with the significant and emerging labour shortage that we've got. Paul Tool says he'll fight for an increase in caps on international arrivals. And if we can't get the crops off, we can't get you know, produce from those trees, they actually go to rot. The Country Women's Association says there's a long list of issues that need attention. We also have issues on level crossing safety, on inland rail, on provision of education services to rural areas, um, the provision of social and affordable housing. And she says a response to the regional hospital crisis revealed by an ongoing inquiry will be crucial. I really think there does need to be a recognition that rural health delivery in some areas of the state is actually broken. Mental Health Minister Bronnie Taylor was unchallenged for the role as deputy leader. Paul Toole has praised some of the giants of his party, including Ian Armstrong and Andrew Stoner. As the new leader, he says he wants to emulate those who built up his party by giving the people of the bush a voice. Kelly Fuller, ABC News.